Hi, this is Terry Couty, founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation Educational Video Channel. I'm very pleased today to have two very special guests with me. Dr. Ann Pellad is a dual trained breast plastic and reconstructive surgeon practicing in San Francisco. She is also an educator and innovator of novel breast surgery techniques and a breast cancer survivor herself like me. I am joined today also by her husband, Dr. Zeev Pellet, and he is a board certified plastic surgeon trained to perform a full spectrum of, ad, of, ad, of aesthetic and reconstructive plastic surgical procedures. I don't think I have enough time in this video to really give you guys all the kudos you need, but that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Terry. So we're, I'm, I'm very happy to have you, and really it, it is the introduction that I gave where your two talents really collide. And so today we're gonna to talk about the topic of nerve preservation and restoring sensation to the breast in the setting of implant-based reconstruction. Um, because sensation remains a major limitation in breast reconstruction at the time of or after a mastectomy, this is what I want the viewer to know today. You should be aware that this is very specialized surgery and it's not performed by all plastic surgeons. However, the purpose of today's video is to inform the viewer. Oftentimes, it's the lack of resources and knowledge of a particular procedure that results in those limitations. We hope the conversation today with Dr. Pellet and Dr. Pellet really helps broaden your knowledge of this topic to ask questions at your own consult. So what I wanna to do today with both of you is start with the paper. A year ago, my interest really peaked in the topic that you're going to talk about today PRS Global Open is an open access paper that as a patient advocate, I have access to. The title of the paper is Nerve Preservation and Allografting for Sensory Innervation Following Immediate Implant-Based Reconstruction. I'm going to stop there <laughs> and let you guys take over. Please tell us about this, such an important topic. So, um, you know, you'd mentioned in your introduction that I am a breast cancer survivor myself, and Zeev and I actually started doing this in February 2018 when I was considering my options and felt like the lack of sensation I knew to expect after mastectomy really made mastectomy a very difficult choice for me. And so um, we actually started very soon after my own breast cancer surgery to start doing this procedure. And the paper you mentioned is kind of what we call our pilot study, looking at our first set of patients, about 34 breasts in the series, um, 17 patients, and looking at what were the outcomes with kind of our twofold approach. So the first one is to try to keep all the nerves during the mastectomy. So that's the nerve preservation part you mentioned. And then in patients where for whatever reason, anatomy or the way that the, their nerves look, we also graft to help improve their sensation. So it's kind of our combination approach, all in implant-based reconstruction. Yeah, and I, I would say that that's really important because as uh, I think we mentioned in the paper and as we talk about when we speak, uh, in forums like this or anywhere else in medical conferences, 80% of the reconstruction done in this country is implant-based. And uh, yes, uh, you know, there's a, there are a number of centers that have talked about preserving and then optimizing sensation after uh, reconstruction with autologous tissue, meaning your own tissue from other, where, uh, other parts of the body. Uh, but there is fortunately a way to do this uh, if you choose to have an implant-based reconstruction or if you simply are not a candidate for those autologous uh, tissues. Um, I think that it's a really interesting thing that we've embarked upon because what we're realizing more and more is that as we understand the anatomy better, as we gain further experience with this, we're able to preserve more nerves. We are able to preserve longer lengths of native nerves, so requiring less grafting, which means a quicker recovery time and a better overall recovery. Um, 
so it's a really exciting uh, development for us, uh, and I think for it's going to be beneficial to many many women moving forward. Oh, it it really is. And Dr. Steve Pellad, if you could answer a quick question for me, because you're um, keenly interested in peripheral nerve reconstruction in in your practice, can you speak to us about what nerves, what are those peripheral nerves? And and the ones that you look for in this preservation as Dr. Ann Pellet talked about. Right, so uh, the nervous system can be divided along many parameters. There's the central nervous system, which is brain and spinal cord. And then there's peripheral nervous system, which are all those nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord. Those are the hand, the toes, and then the, the trunk. Um, and in the case of uh, breast reconstruction, there are nerves that come out underneath each rib. And the primary innervation to the breast skin envelope, as well as the nipple and areolar complex, is uh, a nerve coming out under the second, or sorry, third, fourth, and or fifth uh, ribs. And so basically, if you understand the anatomy and the typical trajectory of those nerves, uh, there are two things that you can do during a mastectomy procedure. One, if you can find the nerves very quickly uh, in the early part of the mastectomy and then try to preserve it so that the actual mastectomy specimen can be removed, leaving the nerve intact, that's this nerve preservation part. And those patients usually recover pretty darn good, if not near normal sensation within a few weeks or a month or so because after the nerve inflammation settles down, the nerves are intact and haven't been disturbed. Uh, in some cases, the anatomy is what we've termed unfavorable, which simply means that the nerve happens to pass right through the actual breast tissue that actually needs to be removed from an oncologic standpoint. And in that case, the trick becomes to identify a downstream target to hook that nerve up to, number one. Number two, it's to try and preserve as much length of that nerve so that the amount of nerve you have to remove is as little as possible as opposed to removing it right off the chest wall, which would leave a big gap. And that allows the recovery from that nerve grafting and reconstruction to occur more quickly and allows a more robust optimal result with a really good sensation as opposed to pretty good sensation or some sensation. Mm -hmm. so. Terry, I wanted to just add to something that Zeev's brought up that I think is really important, which is this idea of being oncologically safe. Yes. So I get asked a lot by patients, both women with cancer and also women having risk-reducing mastectomies with strong family history or genetic mutations, if this mastectomy is any different from a cancer, so an oncologic standpoint. And I think it's really important to, for patients to know that the answer to that is it is the same mastectomy that people are doing from an oncologic standpoint, and certainly the same one I was doing from an oncologic standpoint before we started doing this. The only difference is being careful, looking for those nerves, doing preservation and grafting, and really being aware of them and doing a different dissection to find them. But in terms of removing all visible breast tissue, which is always the goal for mastectomy, we are still doing that. And as more surgeons start adopting these techniques, which I really hope they will, I think that's really key that women feel safe which is obviously all of our most important goal is to make sure we are doing the right thing, providing a good mastectomy. I think it's important for women to know that. Yes, I do too. I absolutely do too, because um, the, the resection, if I'm using the correct word, of the tumor is paramount for the, the long-term um, survivor for the patient, yes. Exactly, I mean, the last thing we would wanna be doing is doing what we find, and I know you feel the same way, as an incredibly important quality of life addition to breast reconstruction, but not be actually providing good cancer outcomes or good risk reduction outcomes. So I, I think that's key that women feel safe about that. Yes, I do too. And, and, and again, I think my interest peaked because you were doing it in the setting of implant reconstruction. And as Dr. Zeev Pellad mentioned, I had deep flaps. So I had autologous reconstruction and it was delayed. And so those nerves were cut. I had numbness after my mastectomy. So that's the difference in what you guys are talking about. This is a preservation that restores that feeling a little bit, actually a lot quicker than, than what I experienced. And uh, it was clear to me that, you know, with my nerve reconstruction, it would... Um, the sensation would regenerate over a period of time. And so there are differences. And, you know, listening to 
the specialty and how much you, the, the preservation part really brings to mind for me as a patient, the specialty skill that it's really required for you and, and these other really, I think it's a select group of surgeons who are preserving nerves. It takes a very skilled eye. It takes patience. It takes practice, interest in doing this. Yeah. I mean, I think it also speaks to the team approach. Um, as you and I have spoken about, I understand that even my team is very unique in my being dual trained, but I actually really think, I think about, for instance, plastic surgeons who are doing uh, deep flap reconstruction and, and with sensation and neurotization for those. Those are trained microsurgeons. They're good at taking care of nerves, grafting nerves. They've been doing it. And I think if you combine surgeons who have that interest already with breast surgeons, who are interested in this. I think breast surgeons on the whole tend to be people who really want to have good outcomes for their patients. They want to have good aesthetics. They want to have good quality of life. So I think you can combine those groups of people and really get these great teams for patients where, you know, similar to what Zeev and I do, from start to finish, this is a team effort to make sure that each of our parts go well and how we work together. And I think that many breast and plastic surgeons are already thinking about those teams and how you get good outcomes after breast reconstruction as a whole. So I like to think that the leap to starting to this part of it is there and the interest is there. It's just, as you mentioned, the technical skills for people to learn to get there. Right, and I think I would add to that, uh, while I agree and certainly appreciate the specialty nature of everything, I think as Anne alluded to now, it, it's also something that's very teachable because uh, people who do microsurgery uh, they can easily adapt the skills that they've uh, been using for years to put very, very tiny vessels together uh, to, and, and you know, if they have an interest and really care about this, which I think most breast and plastic surgeons who do breast reconstruction mm -hmm. uh, and breast cancer surgery obviously very much do, um, you know, if you have that interest, it's, it's, a, it's a learnable technique like anything else. And uh, again, I think the, my, my practice is about 90% peripheral nerve and in general, they are the happiest patients and the, the, the results that you see from these types of procedures are amazing. This has only added to that and it's really remarkable to see women come back to the office and say, you know, I feel my breasts feel normal, which to me always, you know, makes the hair on the back of my head, which is uh, becoming less and less with time, uh, kind of stand up on its, uh, you know, on its end because when I really think about it, they actually don't have their breast tissue, but it actually doesn't matter as much anymore because to them it feels like they do because mm -hmm. uh, the nerves that used to innervate the skin and the nipple areola complex are either there or reconstructed and regenerated. And that's, that's really the ultimate goal. Well, and, and that really helps the patient move beyond the diagnosis. Yeah. It's, it's that reminder that I'm getting back to normal. Those mm -hmm. feelings of, you know, of, of getting back to normal are so important for breast cancer patients. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, really, I think the, the efforts of coordinated care between uh, microsurgeons, plastic surgeons, breast surgeons, to me, has really come alive the last couple of years. I saw it at the breast surgeons meeting last year. What I really enjoyed was watching all of you talk and share your information. At the most recent uh, coordinated care, the, the BC3 conference, which is a coordinated care uh, breast cancer conference um, that, that we all attended, last one before the, before the coronavirus hit. Right. But I love the coordinated care piece. I think it's so important. I agree. And I mean, beyond just the surgical part of it, what I love about that meeting is the appreciation for everyone else that's part of our team too, right? And we think we send all of our patients, for instance, to see physical therapists after surgery. And I personally think that the work that they do helps the sensation come back. You know, I think we're doing a better job with healing, with lymphatic flow, and all of that I think makes a big difference. And so I think that coordinated care is so key um, for what we do in breast cancer surgery as a whole. Well, I really appreciate both of you joining today. What I'd like to do, since you are so keen on patient reported outcomes, I love PROMS, patient reported outcome measurements. Mm -hmm. um, let's do a revisit and see how this is all going. Um, 
We love Wonderful. it, Terry. We're in phase two. So we have yeah. our patient report outcomes data and it's coming. So we would love to do that when we have more because I agree with you. Like It doesn't really matter what we think about it. Right. It matters what our patients think. So we would love that. Well, that's important to me too. So thank you both for joining me today. And please like and uh, subscribe to our channel. Please comment too and let us know if there are any other topics we could cover for you. And again, Thanks again to Dr. Ann Pellet and Dr. Zeev Pellet for joining us today. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks so much, really Terry. Appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thank you.